I was in primary school and <laughs> this was like literally our last race. So just bear that in mind. So I had a couple friends around me. Can't really remember the names, but I do remember my cousin being there. His name is Alan and he was running alongside me and he's actually like really fast. Back then he was like really, really quick. Like a, he was a thunderbolt. Like I don't know out of me and him who was faster. I'm going to say me because I just feel like I was the fastest in my primary school. But, you know, I can only speak for myself. So this is the last race. Everyone is holding the wall and we're just waiting for the countdown so we can run this race. And in my head, I'm thinking... I'm going to win this race. There's no no one's going to beat me. I'm going to run so fast that I will win this race. And you see all the girls on the outside, like just watching us. <laughs> and three, two, one, the countdown goes down and we're all off. We're all running, sprinting as fast as we can. And... On the other side is like a wall, like a brick wall. And that day was kind of wet. So there was like, you know, a wet surface and like just a brick wall. So usually we'd bounce off the brick wall and come back to like touch, you know, touch wherever you begin is where you need to end to win the race. And I used to like, I used to like jumping off the wall, <laughs> the brick wall. So we're approaching, I'm like literally first, no one, no one's around me. I, not that I was focused on anyone else, but I knew I was first. Like you can tell just through your peripherals. And <laughs> I'm running so fast. I'm like three quarters towards the brick wall. And boom. I, I slip and face first. I, I think it was around here. I like scraped my face and that caused a lot of grief for me, a lot of suffering because everyone was watching and witnessed that happen and uh, my face was like not as bad but it was like bleeding and I was rushed to the matron, the person that you know helps you to put first first aid and check if you're all right <laughs> and I was so disappointed I was so disappointed that I had to be the person to slip and cause damage to myself and <laughs> it was it was grief and it caused me a lot of anxiety because I loved running I loved like that was lit in primary school. That was probably the one thing I loved the most out of anything else was running and just beating other people in races and just always calling myself the champ. I was really like a, a, a slim, slim, very skinny kid. So, and I was like really small. I was like five foot, maybe four eleven. Probably one of like the average shortest kids. And then I started to grow eventually later on, but. I'm in this matron's office and like she had to like put a plaster on my face and I leave the office and I walk into my classroom and everyone's just like staring at me from what happened. And I remember there was a girl that I used to like in primary school. Very funny story. <laughs> and I actually approached her and she she was like, mesmerized like at the speed I was running like she didn't even mention anything about my scar or anything like that like the cut or how what happened and she was just smiling and the funniest thing is <laughs> me and my cousin actually used to like this girl her name was like Saffron or something <laughs> we used to like this girl and I don't know if it was like a competition but we wanted to see who could get her first and it was just bare weird like for a 10 year old like, not necessarily get her, but, like, who who could please her the most, essentially. Some, like, simp stuff, simp behavior. And I felt so much better 
after speaking to her because that was like our first interaction like proper interaction so like I just felt like I forgot about everything all that anxiety all that build up and obviously I went to speak to my cousin and I told him and he was like oh he was very happy and gassed and <laughs> that was just like that was probably one of my most iconic moments in life because I literally went from exhilarated so happy to run this race cause damage to myself miserable <laughs> and then I end the day happy again somewhat and then I go home and I realize the reality that you know I injured myself I can't run for a while because I don't want to cause that same thing again so I did actually stop running and now I look at my life and I'm so much more careful. As carefree as I am, I'm so, I'm also very careful with what I do. I avoid situations where I could put my life at risk. And not necessarily my life, but, you know, hitting or reaching that threshold where you're going, you're having too much excitement. I've come to learn that there's no point of maximizing <laughs> like it's good to hit your threshold I don't know if this makes sense but sometimes in life you just got to be balanced and make steady gains and try to avoid like impressing people work hard but work hard for yourself and that's the lesson I kind of learned from that experience and I would say that the anxiety I got during that moment of feeling like the anguish was definitely worth the return of investment now because now I feel so much, you know, clarity. I feel good that I went through all those experiences because it, it developed me into the person I am now and I'm so grateful for that. And what I've learned is that having friends, having people around you that are supportive is the most important thing in life. And if you can, if you can find or embrace that person that is near you, and I'm not saying be weak, like show them tough love, but if you can embrace that person you will live a better life and a longer life.